Hi friends, this is P. Dona Tejashmi from Riyadh Medical Academy. Now I am going to discuss about the most interesting and the most easiest chapter in our physics first year syllabus that is heat and thermodynamics. In this chapter, the main topics I am going to discuss with you are thermometry, calorimetry, first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics and at last transfer of heat. Let us move on to our first topic, thermometry. Thermometry is measurement of temperature. What is temperature? The degree of hotness or coldness quantitatively represented by temperature. Temperature is measured using thermometers. Different thermometers lead to different thermometric scales such as Kelvin, Fahrenheit, Raman and so on. Relation between these thermometric scales can be expressed by this ex expression. X is unknown thermometric scale minus lower fixed point by upper fixed point minus lower fixed point. In Celsius scale, the lower fixed point is 0 and upper fixed point is 100 degree centigrade. In Fahrenheit scale, the lower fixed point is 32 and upper fixed point is 212. And in Kelvin scale, the lower fixed point is 273 and upper fixed point is 373. By this expression, we can find the unknown thermometric scale temperature and we can compare different thermometric scales between relation between different thermometric scales. Let us move on to our next topic called calorimetry. What is calorimetry? Measurement of heat is calorimetry. Heat is a form of energy that flows from one body to another body with virtue of temperature difference. This can be expressed as delta Q is equals to M S delta V. Here M is the mass of substance taken, S is the specific heat of substance and delta T is the temperature difference of the substance. Let us know what is specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of substance to 1 degree centigrade is known as specific heat capacity of that substance. We all know that specific heat capacity of water is 1 calorie per gram degree centigrade and specific heat capacity of ice is 0.5 calorie per gram degree centigrade. Friends, let us see this graph first. Here, here when heat is giving to the substance, a body from A, a to B, its temperature get changed, its temperature is gone increasing from A to B. But from B to C, we are giving the heat but the temperature is not changing. What happening in the B to C form? That is, it's getting changed, its phase is getting changed. That is, heat given to a substance does not change the temperature during phase change. From B to C, its temperature does not increase it, so from B to C, its, get, its phase is getting changed. When phase changes, delta Q can be expressed as delta Q is equal to M into L. Here L is the latent heat capacity. Next friends, let us move on to our next topic, the important topic. That is first law of thermodynamics. Friends, do you know what happens when heat is supplied to a system? Let us know what happens in a system when heat is supplied through this first law of thermodynamics. When heat is given to a system, it is used to increase the internal energy of the system as well as to do work. This can be expressed as delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W. Here delta Q is heat given to the system or heat extracted from the system. When heat is given to the system, we write here delta Q as positive. And when heat is extracted from the system, we take delta Q as negative. And the same way, when heat, when here double, delta W is work done by the system and work done on the system. When work is done by the system, delta W is taken as negative and when, when the work is done by on the system, delta W is taken as positive. Friends, we all know that Friends, we know the heat change when 1 gram of water converted to 1 gram of steam. We all know that 
the amount of heat required to raise to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water to 1 gram of steam is 540 kelvin let us calculate work done during this process here work done during this process of conversion of 1 gram of water to 1 gram of steam is p into v2 minus v1 here p is 1.01 into 10 power 5 pascals that is newton per meter square here v2 is volume of steam that is 1671 minus here v1 is volume of water that is minus 1 here we are taking in centimeter square by converting it to meter square we are multiplying it with 10 power minus 6 here by solving this we get 169 joules as we have taken for 540 as calories to convert these joules into calories we are dividing with Dividing it with 4.2. By dividing it with 4.2, we get theoretically 40 calories of work. So, during conversion of 1 gram of water to 1 gram of steam, only 40 calories is being used. But what happens to the remaining 500 calories? So, th by, this, by this equation, we can say that the remaining 500 calories is used to increase the internal energy of the system. Here, we have taken 540 calories, 540 calories of heat. It is using 500 calories of heat for raising the internal energy, and the remaining 40 is being used by it to do the work. By this expression, we can say that first law of thermodynamics is according to the law of conservation of energy. This point is very important because it has been asked in our 2018 heat exam. Next, let us move on. Let us see this expression in different thermodynamic processes. The, uh, the few thermodynamic processes I want to discuss with you are isobaric process, isochoric process, isothermal process and adiabatic process. In isobar the thermodynamic process in which the pressure kept constant is isobaric process, and the thermodynamic process in which volume kept constant is isochoric process. And the thermodynamic process in which temperature kept constant is isothermal process. And the thermodynamic process in which there is no heat flow is adiabatic process. Let us see the mean relation of these different thermodynamic processes. Here, as P is constant, we write this PV expression as P into V power 0 is constant. In isochoric process, PV power infinite is constant. In isothermal process, PV power 1 is constant. And in adiabatic process, PV power gamma is constant. Let us see this first law of thermodynamic expression in these different processes. Here, dQ is equals to dU plus dW. Here, in isochoric process, as delta V is 0, delta W gets 0. So, DQ, the expression becomes dQ is equals to dU. And in isothermal process, as dt is 0, du gets 0. So we get that dq is equal to dw in isothermal process. In adiabatic process, as dq is equal to 0, we get du is equal to minus dw. Let us see specific heats of these different processes. In isobial process, as pressure is constant, we take specific heat as specific heat at constant pressure. And in isochoric process, we take specific heat at constant volume. In isothermal process, specific heat is infinite. This is because specific heat is equal to dQ by n dt. Here, in isothermal process, dt is 0. So, 1 by 0 of anything is infinite. So, specific heat capacity of isothermal process is infinite. In the same way, in adiabatic process, as dQ is 0, 0 by anything is 0, specific heat capacity is 0 in adiabatic process. Let us see this PV graph in different thermodynamic process. In this PV graph, area of adiabatic is less than area of isothermal process. Area of PV graph indicates work. So, the work done by isothermal process is greater than work done by adiabatic process. Here in this volume gets increased, that is expansion. Here in this volume gets decreased, that, that is compression. This graph is compression and this graph is expansion. By this graph, we can correlate the relations, relation between works of different 
thermodynamic processes. Next friends, let us move on to our next topic, second law of thermodynamics. What is second law of thermodynamics? It's, it has two statements. That the first statement is, it is impossible to construct heat engine which completely converts heat into work. Let us know what, let us know what is heat engine. Heat engine is a device which converts heat into work. In heat engine, it absorbs given amount of heat from source at temperature T1 and converts some part of heat into work and, the, and it rejects Q amount of heat to the sink at temperature T2. The efficiency of heat engine is given by eta is equals to W by Q1. Here we got W as Q1 minus Q2. So replacing W with Q1 minus Q2, we get Efficiency of heat engine as Q1 minus Q2 by Q1. Do you know friends, if heat engine is works in opposite direction, what it is called? It is called refrigerator. Heat engine working in opposite direction is refrigerator. Here in refrigerator, Q1, Q2 amount of heat is taken by the system from the sink at temperature T2 and it also receives W amount of work and it rejects Q1 amount of heat to source at temperature T1. The quotient of performance of this refrigerator is given by Q2 by W. By replacing W with Q1 minus Q2, we get beta as Q2 by Q1 minus Q2. The relation between this eta and beta can be expressed as 1 by eta is equals to 1 plus beta. In second law of thermodynamics, the other statement is the heat supply to heat always transfers from a body at higher temperature to the body at lower temperature without help of any machine. Heat always transfers from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature without the help of any machine. Is second statement of this second law of thermodynamics. Let us move on to our next topic and the last topic, very interesting topic. That is transfer of heat. How heat gets transformed from one body to another. Heat, we had seen in the second law of thermodynamics that heat always flows from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature. While transferring heat, heat transfers mainly by three processes that is conduction, convection and radiation. Let us know how conduction takes place and what is conduction. What is conduction? Conduction, it is a process of transformation of heat in which the heat transfers from one point to other point without actual movement of molecules is known as conduction. Heat thermal conduction across a conductor is given by the formula Q is equals to Ka delta theta by L into T. As there is heat, as heat flowing continuously, there may also be some resistance again as the heat flow. This is known as thermal resistance. This thermal resistance is given by R is equals to L by K. Here K is coefficient of thermal conductivity. A is area of procession of conductor taken. And delta theta by L is delta theta by L is temperature difference. Temperature difference. And let us move on to other form of conduction that is convection. Let us know what is convection. Convection is the process of transformation of heat in which there is actual movement of molecules during transfer of heat. Convection is mainly by the actual movement. Convection, in convection, heat transfers mainly by actual movement of molecules. In fluids, fluids conduct heat only through convection. Natural convection always takes place against gravity. Friends, do you know when when hands are placed above the flame, we feel much hotter when hands are placed at the same horizontal distance from the flame. This is because heat transfers by both radiation and convection in vertical direction and the heat transfers only through radiation in horizontal direction. Before I had said convection is always 
again as it flows again as gravity so in vertical direction the heat flow by radiation and convection we can feel the heat flow by radiation and convection in horizontal direction there will be only heat flow by radiation by this we have known what is convection let us move on to other topic called radiation what is radiation guys do you know about radiation here this is also a process of transformation of heat in which the, the, there should not be any medium for the transformation of heat this is radiation when radiation is through virtue of temperature it is called thermal radiation thermal radiation is an electromagnetic wave here thermal radiation by an object per unit area per unit second is given by e is equals to e sigma a t power 4 Thermal radiation emitted by every object is directly proportional to fourth power of its temperature. By this expression, we can say that thermal radiation emitted by any object is directly proportional to fourth power of its temperature. Thermal radiation emitted by every object is not uniformly distributed for every object, but it is maximum for particular wavelengths. This can be seen by this energy distribution curve. This energy distribution curve was explained by us by Green's displacement law. When we see this energy distribution curve with increasing temperature, the wavelength maximum intensity of wavelength emitted by an object get reduced from lambda one to lambda three. Here we are increasing temperature from T one to T three, but We are get, we are getting radiation Okay okay energy distribution curve was explained by Green's displacement law in Green's displacement law says that the product of intensity of maximum wavelength emitted by an object is directly in is inversely proportional to temperature emitted temperature given to a substance Green's displacement law states that the product of maximum intensity of wavelength produced by an object and absolute temperature is constant for every object. By this last statement, I close my teaching. Here we have seen that as maximum intensity of wavelength is inversely proportional to temperature. Here lambda three is less than lambda two is less than lambda one, so T one is less than T two is less than T three. Here the P curve of T three has less wavelength emitted, less wavelength emission. Okay, guys. Uh, last day I want to say you one thing that. Just concentrate the units of this before answering the question. Before applying the given values in the formulas, just check out the units of every every unit every expression because units are very important. We are getting confused and we are doing much mistakes in a, in applying units. So concentrate in applying the units. I hope you all guys understood my lesson well. At last, we as Medical Academy wishes you a very good luck for your NEET examination. Thank you.